You mentioned Matthew Shepard. Yes. You, you, you called out Atiana Jefferson, but in the book you actually talk about also James Byrd. Yes. So two things that were, I think, significant, they're mentioned in passing-ish, but they seem significant to me, at least, in terms right. of understanding how you were understanding your Absolutely. environment, were the dragging death of James Byrd mm -hmm. and the, the murder of Matthew Shepard. Yes. And understanding how... Because you're gay, you can be killed. Because right. you're black, you can be killed. That, that, that's just enough, uh -huh. right? That's enough. Could you talk a little bit about those yeah, two as, yeah. as, as um, backdrops? And it's, it's interesting because I, I knew the climax in Phoenix, Arizona, which we can talk about. I knew yeah. that's where we were going to go as a writer and reader together. Um, and, and just organically, truly, um, I was like, okay, so what are the earliest iterations of, of some of these themes when I started you know, being aware? And right. I just started writing about this summer and, and these specific memories. And I looked it up and I was like, oh, okay, May 1998. Okay, huh, what was going, oh my gosh. James Byrd Jr., that is June of 1998. That's right. Jasper, Texas. That is four hours from Louisville, right. Texas. Right, Louisville, which uh, is where, where you I grew, grew up, up where my which mom is and just I outside living. north of Dallas. Yep, yep, right. just yep. up I-35, right between Denton and Dallas. Right. Um, so that's where we're living when, you know, I remember, and I write about us watching it on the evening news, hearing right. that he was beaten up and chained to the back of a truck by three white men right. who offered him a ride home from work. They turned out to be white supremacists, and they dragged him until his body was dismembered. For the sin of being black. For the sin of being black, as right. they perceived it. His body actually desegregated that cemetery in Jasper. Yeah. And much like Emmett Till's memorial, uh, which you know is just recently replaced, it's been graffitied and covered in racial slurs over and over again. You right. know, um, So that's June, and I'm watching that, and I'm like, okay, well, that's one bit of information. Right. That October is when Matthew Shepard, 21 years ago right. in Laramie, Wyoming, uh, meets two um, young men at a bar, and they're like, hey, you wanna keep, go drinking, go hang out, and they you know, they beat him and leave him for dead in a field. Um, and of course, that became a national right. story. So that, and, and so, I, I, it was like, I'm 12 years old, James Burt Jr., I'm 12 years old, Matthew, Matthew Shepard, Shepherd, I'm 12 right. years old. All of that it is can, happening. It can't help but be context. Yeah, and, right. and, you know, and we have to understand this about young people. Well before the age of 12, by the way, young people are always reading the American room. They are always watching us, and yeah. certainly they have more media now than I did as a kid. And so there, there's a whole nother level of you know, social media, but they, they see what's the news, they hear what's right. coming on the radio. And, and I remember, you know, being in the car and, and hearing, you know, shock shock say homophobic or racist things and people are laughing. Right. And you, you turn around and you look, are other people laughing? Is my mom laughing? No. Right. Okay, thank goodness. But you remember, know, this you, is you're 21. You're talking about 21 years ago yeah. when Bird and Shepard were both killed. Yeah. So 21 years later, mm -hmm. the next generation of kids right. is even more aware. Yes. Is even more plugged yes, in, I think connected. So. I think so. And, right. you know, some things have changed. Yeah. When I was 12, the idea of getting married one day to a man that I love right. was... A fantasy. How about a gay presidential candidate campaigning with a husband, knew? right? Who, who yeah. I might not even like. Right. Isn't that great? <laughs> I, I'm not required to agree with him right. because of our sexual identity right. or to agree with some of the other candidates because of our racial identity. You, we have options. Yeah. So things have changed. You right. know, marriage equality is a part of our life. There is more right. representation. Well, in fact, you talk in the book yeah. about Obama being elected. Yeah. I mean, it's, not a it's not a political book as far as it goes, although mm -hmm. it's obviously a political book. Mm -hmm. One of the moments that is sort of more conventionally political is, sure. oh, African-American president. Right? right, yeah. But again... Deep anxiety. Vastly different, uh -huh. and yet also... Yeah, right. yeah, because yeah. Uh, by the time I'm a senior in college in, in Kentucky, I went to Western Kentucky University, right. uh, in a, a seminal moment in the book that collides with his history, it's right before he gets the nomination. Yeah. Um, right before Iowa, actually, Iowa, Iowa yeah. caucus. And uh, yeah, and I, I just... Every morning I woke up terrified he would be that he was going to be assassinated. And in right. fact, honestly, when he won, I remember when the inauguration and they announced that um, Michelle Obama and Barack Obama were going to walk through the parade. And I remember like, please don't do please that. Please don't do it. Oh, my gosh. Because, again, I am a Texas kid. And every Texas yeah. kid has been to the grassy knoll. Yeah. You know, we, you, we have those images. You, and so I remember, remember. Yeah. So the joy of the breakthrough was right. tempered by the, and look at us now, you know, after the years after two, um, a, two terms of a black president, look at how America responds right. to these breakthroughs. We're actually, it's we, we, we seem to be worse than we were before, mm -hmm. or at least we're saying the quiet part out loud. It's almost like we're being punished for the breakthrough.